Welcome, in front of me is a Xiaomi Pad 6 and today I will show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So let's start off by opening up our settings and here we're going to navigate to home screen and we have, I believe by default this is yep, enabling the search instead of app drawer so you can go here, select where is it? Home screen, classic. And we have uh, with app drawer. So one could argue that app drawer is the classic for Android. This is classic for iOS, which let's be honest, they are trying to uh, copy, which also brings me to another function right here, which is the bar. Now it is trying to copy Apple, but Apple, if I believe, if you do a slow swipe, it gives you the bar. Uh, here it does nothing apart from activating the gesture. But you have this a little bit of a less transparent kind of bar right here, which you can swipe up and bring your bar. And from here, you can grab an application, uh, move it outside of it. And as you can see, it gets opened up in this pop-up view. And we should be also able to somehow split screen it, I believe. Anyway. No, apparently not. Okay, that's kind of odd. Let's try this egg. Okay, um, so there was a little bit of a bugginess happening, so let's see if it will work now. Nope, apparently it doesn't want to do split screen, which is a little bit odd. Now, how the heck do I actually close this? Now, to be completely honest, I believe there should be a, a little bar showing up here, but I guess we can just do this close it. Uh, other devices do have a bar showing when you click on it, giving a couple different options. One of them being split screen. Now hopefully Xiaomi will implement that just because it's a little bit of a convenient function to have and this device most certainly should be able to split screen applications. A floating window though, let's see, click right here. There we go. So from here, you can split screen it like this. And it looks like this is the only way you can split screen, which uh, kind of defeats the purpose of a bar uh, that should be giving you this. But luckily, they do have the option to kind of have this saved by the looks of it. So later on, if we, I believe, close this, never mind, it just disappears. So I am kind of using this bar at the moment as the first time and I'm trying to see the logical options right here as you would normally see on other devices that have this but it looks like the bar is just a bar which to be completely honest other devices I uh, can do this by just having the swipe from a side kind of bar and it functions the same way at this point um, actually in some cases it might actually function a little bit better than this so anyway i'm gonna ignore this uh, you can access the bar and just have a pop-up window if you want to but other than that it seems to be relatively useless so let's move over to other things like notification uh, and control center and here we have things like notification shade we have android or miui this is just a themed look which we need to pull it down from the left side so here we have the normal look, the MIUI. Honestly, very little difference. I think Android has a little bit of a bigger uh, tiles. Yeah, I, I think they're just a little bit bigger. Uh, so that's the only difference. We do have also some info about the notifications. You can interact with them if they show up as it is, I believe, also on the Xiaomi devices. So when you have this notification, you can kind of drag it down and it will open it up in a pop-up view, which is pretty nice. We also have the uh, status bar right here, show notification icons. This just hides the icons right here. Uh, now, do we have the option to show numbers? No, we don't. 
Other devices do also have the option to substitute this instead of hiding it to show you a cumulative number of notifications as a number instead of icons. Uh, but if you want a clean look, you could just turn that off right here and the notifications are still accessible when you pull it down. Uh, below that we have also uh, the options for battery indicator. Now I personally like it by default as it is, which is the uh, battery with a percentage inside of it, uh, but there's also an interesting one that I don't think very many devices have, which is this one. This is just going to add a blue line across the entirety of your uh, screen, and you can see just the ending right here, which means that my device is almost dead. That being said, let's plug it in, in this case. As you can see, it also changes color to green from a red, because it is being charged right now. Now, moving further down the list, we have additional settings right here. And here, we have a couple different, well, additional settings. We have things like the floating windows, uh, which gives you just the info about it. Now, let's see if we can actually customize this from here. So, it looks like we can't customize the uh, actual working of this which I was kind of hoping we could once I saw this. Now, that being said, uh, I did notice one option right here, which is the split screen combination. So you should be able to actually save it as a shortcut and from there be able to launch it quickly uh, from your apps menu or the bar, which I tried to do it, just it didn't really work too well. Ah. Oh. Oh. So you don't get to put it in here to put it on your home screen okay then now anyway i'm gonna go to the display section here we have a couple options like light and the dark mode so you can swap it between each other uh permanently by selecting one of them oh and that being said you can actually see the green bar a little bit better now and additionally below that we have a scheduled dark mode and this allows you to select it so it automatically switches between light and dark mode either based on the sunset to sunrise or on a custom timer that you can set yourself um it's not not the time yet okay anyway not sure why it automatically swaps to it considering it's four um, now below that we have additional settings we have things like refresh rate which is set to default now counterintuitively default is actually the high refresh rate i believe right so just the refresh rate uh, dynamically based on the screen yep so it is basically the default is the high refresh rate along with the not so high refresh rate so it swaps between 60 and uh, what is it 90 here oh, oh boy it's 144 okay so it basically i don't think it goes to 144 i believe it caps at 120 but we can actually check this out by going into not here into about tablet and enabling developer options again not here so this Yes, it is. So now that developer options are enabled, we can navigate to here, here, developer options, and I will enable the refresh rate to be shown. Show refresh rate. Oh, that's interesting. So good that I checked it because for some reason I didn't notice that it's actually running like crap. So going back into the display, and refresh rate. Oh, right. It's going running on a crap because I changed it to custom. Yeah, this is now 144. So it wasn't 120 like I expected. It's actually going all the way to 144. Now it will stay at this refresh rate as long as there is some animation happening on the screen. But if I go back, it should. There we go. Go to actually 50 instead of 60 that I expected, which is better. So. The reason you might want to prioritize the uh, default option for refresh rate over, for instance, the custom one, which allows you to set it, set it 
either to 1690 or 144 is because if you select to 144 as an example right it's running at 144 as it did before because we have something moving on the screen but when we go back previously we've seen it drop to 120 and what okay then uh scratch that now completely honest this is not how it's supposed to work so when you select it to be on custom you expect the refresh rate to be running permanently at this refresh rate um here that's not really the case yeah um not sure why it's uh, doing that so if you select it on this one just expect that this might actually be fixed at one point considering um these two options at this point are exactly the same I'm kind of making you question why one of them exists so i believe this is actually a bug as we already seen one before uh, so this might be patched up to be running uh, permanently at 144 as it's supposed to uh, so one of those options whenever you select it will basically force your device to be running at this refresh rate now going to finishing this and also touching upon how it's supposed to work and how it probably will in the future uh, so when you select one of those uh, as a default it will be running at the 144 and then drop down all the way to 50 which gives you a better screen on time uh, if you're not actually like constantly doing something 144 hertz permanently will drain your battery quicker so as if you're watching some videos on your device even on youtube even though youtube doesn't support 144 so you won't be really utilizing it the display will be running under this refresh rate consuming more of your battery and that being said at that point you probably would be better off if you tend to consume a lot of media for instance and watch netflix youtube and stuff like that all those uh, different applications will always stream at 60 frames so it really is redundant to be running your display at 144 uh, when you can run it at 60 and get better uh, battery life while still retaining basically the same fidelity of whatever you're watching now that being said for any kind of other tasks like just navigating 60 will be a little bit choppier so obviously on right now for this device uh 60 means still 144 as you can see right here so uh so that doesn't really matter but once that gets fixed which i assume it should get fixed uh then 60 obviously will be a little bit choppier which i can't really showcase right now for the reason because it's bugging out now anyway uh, one last thing that i wanted to show you is the gesture navigation which is enabled by default now gracefully um they do let you know throughout the setup where you can change that instead of giving you the options throughout the setup to change it uh, so you want to go to home screen and then to system navigation and here we have the two different navigation styles the button navigation which whoop, there we go gives you buttons which now actually removes the bar or not bar the task bar at the bottom i have no clue how to get it so i'm still gonna switch to to the gestures i do personally prefer gestures so i'm gonna stick with them stop just, 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 just stop come on There we go. Now, one additional thing is uh, this gesture confirmation. Is that it? No. Okay, uh, so I did think this is actually something else just named weirdly, but it looks like we don't have the option to hide the bar itself. And certain devices you do have the option uh, but i believe it might be hidden right here this option to hide the bar because we do have a division of it so the grayish parts act as a way to pull out your taskbar while the middle part acts as a way of actually navigating with that with those being hidden it might be a little bit harder to you know, maybe not miss it or mess them up so could be that it's hidden for those purposes but i believe other show me phones for instance have the option to actually hide the bar uh, here it only gives us this option which is actually something else so gesture confirmation so if some application uh, for instance playing games or watching if you uh, swipe up because you want to 
do something like swiping up in a game just to pan upwards um, the gesture navigation might think that you're trying to close it and typically when you do this it will just do this right not really what you want so when this is enabled it will instead give you this kind of window right here if you're sure that you want to close it and then you'd swipe again on it to actually close it so that might be a useful option for people that actually want to play games on their tablet now anyway with this being said this would conclude the tweaks and the tricks that i want to show you so if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching